Do you know what a lion's plan is? Have you seen a lion's plan on your vessel? Uh, if not, then this video is going to be very useful for you. Uh, because if you have a lion's plan on your vessel, you should study it for the information it represents. And you should know about what information you can derive from a lion's plan. Uh, this video today will discuss all of it. So I'll show you examples of the lion's plan for different kind of vessels. And you can get an idea of uh, what it's all about and what it represents. Because uh, when the principal dimensions such as displacement and the block coefficient or the midship coefficient are known, uh, you may have an impressive amount of design information, but you still don't have a clear image of the exact geometrical shape of the ship. Now that shape is given by the lines plan. Now in my previous video, I talked about uh, the form coefficients such as the water plane coefficient, the midship section coefficient, the block coefficient and the prismatic coefficient. And in today's video, I'll talk about the lines plan because uh, the shape of a ship can vary in height, length and breadth. Now, in order to represent this complex shape on paper, the transverse sections of the ship's hull are combined with two longitudinal set of parallel lines, each one perpendicular to the other. And this is what I'll take you through and I'll talk about what each of these lines represent, how they are depicted on the lines plan and why you should be knowing about it. So I'll start with the ordinates. The ordinates are actually the evenly spaced vertical cross sections in the transverse directions. Usually the ship is divided into an average of about 20 ordinates and it starts from the center of the rudder stock and the starting from the rudder stock it's called the zero ordinate and it goes up to the intersection of the water line and the molded side of the stem which is the last ordinate. Normally it's the ordinate number 20. Now the, bond, the boundaries of these distances are numbered 0 to 20 and they are called the ordinate numbers. Now a projection of all ordinates into one view is called a frame plan. And this is what you see on your screens right now. You can see all the ordinates are shown to you and is projected onto one, uh, one single frame and this is called a frames plan. Now the other thing that uh, is given in the lines plan is the water lines. Now what are water lines? Now horizontal sections of the hull are actually called water lines. Here I have shown you uh, two depictions of it. Now, one of these is the design water line. Now, this is the water line of the ship at the level of the immersion uh, in full cargo of the vessel. So when the vessel is loaded with full cargo, uh, this is the water line of the ship at the level of the immersion. Uh, between the baseline and the design water line, there are usually about three to four other water lines drawn and they are counted from the baseline, which is called number zero. The construction water line or the scantling water line can be higher. When the water lines are projected and drawn into one view from above, the result is called a water line model. And this is on the left side of your screen. So on the left side of your screen, you can see all the water lines have been projected into one single frame. Uh, that is not the case with the picture on your right side. The picture on your right side depicts the water lines from the forward part of the vessel. You can see the bulbous bow and the shear and the frame of the vessel. But on the left side, you can see all the water lines are depicted in one single frame. And that is why it's called the uh, water line model. Uh, then I move on to verticals and buttocks. And again, um, this is in one single frame that I'm showing you. And in the subsequent slides, you will uh, see them, how they are also displayed if you view it from the forward part of the vessel. Now, verticals uh, or the buttocks, uh, uh, vertical sections in longitudinal direction they are called verticals or they are also called buttock lines. Now, these longitudinal sections are parallel to the plane of the symmetry of the vessel. When the buttocks are projected and drawn into one particular view, the result is called a shear plan. Now, apart from the rectangular sections, sometimes planes are used in longitudinal direction, but an angle with the midship plane. These are called the diagonals or the scent lines. Now, let me show you what diagonals look like. And this is what diagonals look like. Now the diagonals are longitudinal sections that intersect with the hull surface at a certain angle. Now on the longitudinal plan, these diagonals, they show up as curved lines. The curvature of the frames uh, or the ordinates and the water lines and the buttocks are compared to each other and modified until they are consistent and develop smoothly on in all directions. Now, when this procedure is executed, the results can be checked using the diagonals. The most common diagonal is called the bilge diagonal. Here in the last couple of slides, I'm trying to show you how the diagonals 
uh, are depicted how the water lines the ordinates the verticals and the diagonals they all come together now here you can see in the picture here the water lines and the ordinates the verticals and the diagonals all they are represented in one single frame but it is being viewed from the forward part of the vessel now of course uh, these days uh, the plans are made with the aid of computers and that have the capability to transform the shape of the vessel automatically when any kind of modifications in the ship's design require it now when the lines plan is ready the program is used to calculate among the other things the volume of the vessel the displacement and the stability of the ship uh, set against the drafts now here in this picture here this is an example of a lines plan of a trawler vessel uh, with a length of uh, overall of about 120 130 meters all right so as you can see in the lines plan here both the verticals and the water lines are drawn in one half of the ship now in the body plan the frames aft of the midship are drawn on the left side and the forward frames are drawn on the right side now the lines plan is a molded plan that is it is at the outside of the frames uh, thus inside of the shell plating so this is what it is depicting outside of the frames and inside of the shell plating but you can see how the lines plan of a trawler uh, which is about 125 odd meters length looks like and you can also see the associated information provided along with the lines plan uh, which is the length between the perpendiculars the length uh, over all the molded breadth the draft of the vessel I'll, I'll show more details in the next drawing because here this is a lines plan of a tugboat now the lines plan that you see here and the lines plan that i will show you next which will be of a yacht you can see that uh, the lines plan here are of the vessels that have underwater bodies that are quite that differ actually quite drastically now you can see from these plans that a ship will be finer with smaller coefficients such as the block coefficient when the water lines ordinates and the buttocks are more widely spaced now for instance a rectangular forecastle has only one water line one ordinate and one buttock and the coefficients come up to about one in number now if you don't know what coefficients are and what is the importance of it and uh, then please watch my previous video the link is in the description section below make sure you watch that video before you watch this video so you get better understanding now I was talking about the other information associate information that you can get from a line span that you can see here uh, for example the length between perpendicular of the tugboat is about 35 meters the molded breadth is 10 meters the draft molded draft is about 4.5 meters the underwater volume the block coefficient the midship coefficient the prismatic coefficient is provided as well then we have the lcb which is the longitudinal distance of the center of buoyancy of the vessel from the aft perpendicular and also the km of the vessel is provided uh, this is a, again a lines plan of a yacht and like i told you before in my previous slide that when you see the lines plan of a yacht or a tugboat you can see that uh, uh, these are that a ship with will be finer uh, with smaller coefficients and especially when the water lines ordinates and buttocks are more widely spaced so you can see again here a rectangular forecastle will have only one water line one ordinate and one buttock and the coefficients may total up to about one and again you can get an idea of the length of the vessel when i say smaller vessels you can see the length of the vessel here length between perpendicular is only about 23 odd meters the molded breadth is about six meters and the draft is four meters so you can see these are smaller vessels and this, the line span of a smaller vessels and as you will see will differ quite drastically uh, from uh, vessels which are slightly longer in length as i'll show you so when i'll start showing you the uh, let me show you another uh, another line another drawing of a line span of a yacht so you can see here uh, no that is not a this is not a yacht so let me change it this one is actually a coast guard ship and again this has a very uh, um, different kind of an underwater shape you will not see such shapes underwater shapes on a commercial vessel and that is why i've started with the line spline of a of a tug a yacht and a coast guard vessel because these are smaller vessels as you can see by the length of the vessels and they have a, a different kind of a very different kind of a underwater shape of the hull uh, and as i'll show you in my next drawing i'll show you a heavy cargo ship a multi purpose ship uh, they will differ slightly they will you can see you will see a difference between the lines plan here uh, as compared to the longer ships so here you can see is the lines plan of a heavy cargo ship uh, you can also call it a multi purpose vessel and you can see these are much longer in length these are about 135 odd meters as you can see the molded breadth is also much larger this is about 28 meters the draft 
molded draft is about seven meters. The underwater volume is huge. It's huge compared to what I showed you before. And you can see these are more the traditional kind of shapes of underwater bodies and maybe I don't know what kind of ships you guys are sailing on. But if you are sailing on commercial bigger vessels, then you can see that uh, the, the how the lines plan depict the underwater body of the ship differ quite uh, differ from the smaller vessels. So of course you can be sailing on the smaller vessels or you can be sailing on bigger or maybe on both. But why I try to show you both uh, both the pictures is because I want you guys to be able to understand the difference between how the lines plan is depicted in a smaller vessels or longer vessels, uh, vessels with different kind of block coefficients. So remember, as you see every picture, every drawing, uh, please make sure that you also compare not only the length or the draft of the vessel or the depth, depth of the or the breadth of the vessel rather, but also look at the values of the block coefficients. All right, how closely they come up to uh, the number one or whether they are larger than 0.7 or less than 0.7 because if it's larger than seven, you know, they are called finer form vessels. All this I discussed in my previous video that uh, a vessel with a, no, I said the other thing, sorry, a vessel with a smaller block coefficient, smaller than 0.7, they are referred to as finer vessels. All right. Uh, so vessels with more than 0.7 of block coefficient, they are more called, they are called full form vessels. They are not called finer vessels. All right. So look at the comparative values of the block coefficient, the midship coefficient and the prismatic coefficient. And you will see that value changing as well, because if you go back and look at the value of the tugboat, the block coefficient was lesser than 0.7. These are called fine form vessels, whereas the vessels with block coefficient more than 0.7, they are called full form vessels, as you will see in the next picture. So this is the last picture, of course, and this is of a frigate. Uh, you know what a frigate is? So if you don't know what frigate is, uh, frigates are actually, if I can remember, they are actually normally uh, Navy vessels who have been changed into multi-purpose vessels. So the background is that of Navy vessels. They have a Navy vessel background, and then those Navy vessels are used for different kind of purposes, depending on what they are used for. So again, you can see here, they have uh, these vessels. Uh, again, this vessel here is a frigate vessel. You can see again the block coefficient value goes down. It is about only 0.45. So again, these are fine vessels and you can see how the underwater vessel, the shape of the vessel is again a bit uh, different from what you are probably used to on bigger commercial vessels. Uh, and so compare the values and you will see how they depict and uh, make sure that uh, if you have a lines plan on the vessel, then go and look at the lines plan and see how it differs from the ones that I show you. And you can get a lot of information from the lines plan, especially about the underwater shape of the ship. A lines plan is very useful, especially if you're going for dry docks. Sometimes many dry docks, they ask for the lines plan of the vessel because sometimes they want, not sometimes, but they want to arrange the, the keel blocks that you have on the dry dock. Uh, they want to arrange it according to the underwater shape of the vessel's hull. So make sure that you know where your lines plan is located and you can access it. And if a copy is required, you should be able to send it. And from an exam point of view, if you are asked about, an ex uh, about the lines plan, then you should be able to talk about it based on this video today. You may also be asked it about it in a different way because especially if you go for oral examination, the surveyor may ask you that how uh, the dry dock people, how do they decide on how to place the keel blocks? So you may talk about the dry dock plan. There's a separate dry dock plan which also shows about the positioning of the dry dock blocks, but the lines plan also comes in very handy. So the dry dock people, they might actually ask for both the plans, but whether they ask or not, you should be knowing about the lines plan. You should be knowing about what information it represents, why is it useful, and uh, when it may be required to be accessed. All right, so I'll leave you guys uh, with this video today. It's uh, good enough, and I'll move on. I'll talk about the, uh, the vessel plans next. I'll talk about the different kind of plans and the drawings that is available on the vessel, what they all look like, what information you can get from it, how it represents the different sections of the ship. Uh, I hope you like these videos. I, I look forward to your feedback. If you really like these videos and you like the use of the pictures and drawing and me talking about it, then please let me know. Otherwise, I can also provide you with a lot of text for your exam preparation. But I wait for your feedback. I look forward to your likes and your comments, and I'll change the videos accordingly based on the feedback I get from you. All the best with your exams, guys, and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.